And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. Spectacular imagery once again today. All kinds of stuff going on here at the Smash News Network. Least busted name in news. Here's the sun from the SDO. How about the Southern Hemisphere? We did capture a coronal mass ejection in today's imagery as well. We'll get to it momentarily first. The view from Stereo A at Lagrangian point 5 over here on the left. We've got, oh my god, it must be a Klingon bird of prey. It must be a Borg cube or a Borg sphere. Just kidding, folks, it's Mercury. There is a coronal mass ejection warning still in place, folks. Sometimes these things take about three days to play out. We've demonstrated our, our ability to forecast them for the past about 11 months now. And uh, it was unexpected. On the right side of that last imagery there, you've got L1, the viewpoint from L1, the Soho Lasco C3. And we can expect to see some action on these soon. I was just taking a look here. By the way, we did a live stream about show prep. If you haven't seen that, check that out if you like. That was a YouTube Live exclusive. So I just went to the Stereo A website here just to show you that there is a link to what planets are currently visible right there at the top. If you want to ever look that up, it's usually showing up there. There you can see they've cited that Mercury is in the imagery. Here's the solar magnetogram. This area up here, by the way, is not a sunspot. At least it wasn't when we did show prep. We've only got two number groups, this one here and this one down here. We'll worry about the numbers later in the video. 28, 94, and 93, I think. We'll get to it. One is much more likely than the other to produce large flares. We're much more likely to see large flares out of this group down here than out of this group, this sunspot up here, which is quite, quite uh, unremarkable. Its, its fields are not complex. It is a large spot, and it's decayed to mostly umbrae. So the radio flux, the sun outputs radio frequency, folks. It comes out of the upper chromosphere and lower corona. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux. There's the one-year graph of that. I think it's at 93. Here's a Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. And, wow, it's dropped all the way down to 82. That tells me there's a lot of plasma in between the Sun and the Earth right now. Earth is about to get hit by a strong coronal hole wind stream. So we've got about, let's see, until tomorrow, we should start to see additional strong coronal hole winds out of this extremely large North Pole-oriented coronal hole that's just rotated past the Earth-facing zone. Wow, dropped down to 82, despite not a huge reduction in sunspots. So looking at earthquakes over the past 90 days there, you can see there's a 7-magnitude earthquake drought going on. Please be aware of that. Some of these earthquakes could be foreshocks to a much larger event. The largest event was a 6.0 at Indonesia. And by the way, we put out disaster reports for the Smash Team at smashmash.com slash smash team. If you're a silver or gold member, you're probably already aware. All right, and let's just roll up the list here. That 6.0 occurred at 1437 yesterday on the 6th, November 6th. It was a 6.0 magnitude at Indonesia there, north of the Isle of Australia the island continent nation of Australia. South Sandwich Islands saw an uptick here. There's a 5.3 at South Sandwich Islands. Some quakes in the Caribbean. A deep quake at Fiji, the deep quake capital of the world. It was a 4.9 at over 500 kilometers depth. Also on New Zealand, we saw a quake on the island there. Perhaps people stomping their feet about idiotic ideas by the government. Also Tonga, 
saw 5.4. So a bit of an uptick in activity here. Again, any of these could be four shocks, folks. Continuing on to look at today's volcanoes. At VolcanoDiscovery.com, as La Palma continues to erupt, Has it been down ticking? I've heard people, I've heard some, I've heard through the grapevine that it's been ticking down. Looks like the ash plume's a little smaller here in today's report. 8,000 foot ash plume from La Palma. Karimsky, though, exploding. 15,000 foot ash plume from the Kamchatkan volcano. Abiko, 8,000 foot ash plume, flight level 080. From Abiko. Suenose Jima, flight level 070. Mount Ibu, flight level 080. As it explodes, that's an Indonesian volcano. Popocatapetl. What do we have here? Observation flight over Popocatapetl yielded a measurement of summit crater dimensions. Its depth is between 160 and 200 meters and a diameter of 380 to 400 meters. A new presence of a new lava batch was not confirmed. Alert remains at yellow. And it is an active volcano if you're new to the channel and wondering. Fuego exploding for 16,000 foot ash plume over Guatemala from Fuego. Nevado del Ruiz exploding. 20,000 foot ash plume over Colombia. Similar ash plume from Sangue, 20,000 foot over Ecuadorian volcano number one, Ecuadorian volcano number two, Ecuador. 15,000 foot ash plume as it explodes. Sabancaya exploding, 24,000 foot ash plume over Peru. And volcanic ash not detected from Nevados de Chilean. Don't assume it's not erupting. Do assume that we need your support to continue to create these videos and have them publicly visible and free for all to view. Head to smashomash.com. We're making changes today to the to the homepage. Click on Smasho merch if you'd like to pick up some Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera merch. And here they are in order of best selling. I think Mensa just upped Mensa just upended Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera. Vaccinate this being our number one seller, apparently. Then Mensa, then do not pull vault the caldera. Smashomash.com, you can find links there to the Smasho merch. We're seeing low lows and I mean high lows and low highs here on the GOES magnetometers. There's a three day chart. You see this one big spike happening here. A few big spikes there. Each one measured by the GOES 17. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Let's look at more magnetic data. National Sunspot Observatory data is spectacular. Here's the top view ecliptic plane field plot. And Earth is snapping into a south pole current sheet as we make the video. Certainly going on at the moment. There's also a bit of a magnetic tug of war going over there as we have a large plage in the northeastern limb of the sun, and a sunspot in the southeastern limb. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Next, the line of sight plot. You'll be able to see some swinging around of that blue line there. That does give you an indication of the BZ component of the solar wind, if you're wondering. Yeah, this, this data is the best data that you could possibly view. It might not look pretty, but it's quite good. There's that North Pole Corona hole we talked about earlier. And you can see a South Pole one rotating through here. North Pole one quite strong, stretching down below the equator there, making it a trans-equatorial coronal hole. The South Pole one here, a little more uh, defined, but not nearly as large. Here's the imagery. That's 193 angstroms. So this is the North Pole bit over here. This is the South Pole bit over here. 
And you can see this coronal mass ejection here. There was a filament eruption out of sort of the western edge of sunspot 2894, is it? Let's find out. 2893 it is. Okay. So anyway, 2894 is much more complex. 2893 is actually degrading. It's got more penumbral area at the moment than it has umbral area. Likelihood of major flares really not there so much. And there's the flaring over the past three days. Only a couple C-class intensifications here. Nearly a C-class one happening while we did show prep today. Actually, while we recorded the show, it was just leveling off. Here's the proton flux. No spikes in that. No relativistic coronal mass ejected particles headed our way. How about the real-time solar wind? And we did see this interesting dip here. This looks like a little, little bit of CME ejecta here arriving. You see this uptick in the density and a downtick in the velocity and a downtick in the temperature at the same time. So that's consistent with coronal mass ejecta. Another little signature showing up there. Still slightly elevated solar wind here due to coronal hole wind speed regimes. And the BZ just dropped into negative territory here. So we may see a little uptick in the KP index. BZ dropping just as we record the show. Current solar wind density quite diffuse here, 3.7 protons per, cu per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed, 466 kilometers per second. And it's been declining for the past about 16 hours. KP index at 3, we may go back into geomagnetic unrest. I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen. As that was a rather sharp decline in the top bar here, that red line there is the BZ. That is the that is the orientation of the magnetism toward one field or the other. Anyway, you can see quite a bit of geomagnetic unrest here consistently over the past three days. And that coronal mass ejection-induced geomagnetic storm, which had people frightened, I suppose, for some reason. Next, looking at magnetohydrodynamic pressure over the past four hours. I guess some people aren't aware of the modifications to the grid over the past decade. The grid, it's a lot smarter than you might think. Anyway, this is four hours of data, magnetohydrodynamic pressure. We may see a little uptick here just in the, in the la last little snib of this as more induced currents happen. Nope, not really. How about ground magnetic perturbations? And the solar wind data is part of the space weather modeling framework, if you're wondering. Things like the BTBZ and the phi angle and the solar wind density and speed and plasma temperature, those all figure into the space weather modeling framework. Also things like the electron flux. And we're seeing some minor geomagnetic shifts here happening in geospace delta B, changes to Earth's B field. We show it daily since there's a polar excursion happening and people are frightened of it for some reason. Next, looking at the diagram of the solar system. And this gives you an indication where stereo A is located, by the way. If Mercury is moving into the frame of stereo A, it's on Earth's orbit, so it's got to be very close to right about there in terms of this diagram at least, which by the way is not to scale, which means stereo B would be about this far out, something like that. Anyway, we'll give you a solar system forecast. There's where things will be in a week. We'll have a gibbous waxing. Here's a star chart. If you're wondering the path the sun will take across the sky, it's that yellow line there. That's the ecliptic. The blue line's the galactic plane. We show that daily on the Space Weather video to orient people. We like to orient people to reality, not to fakeality. Here at the Smash News Network, we believe integrity is important. And that is why we don't commit cosmic fraud. 
by trying to convince viewers of things that aren't true about space. Now, of course, there's a lot of complaints about mainstream astronomy and yada, yada, yada. We prefer to say stuff that doesn't offend anybody when it comes to cosmology, so let's just let's just attempt to do that on today's cosmology segment. If this offends you, I'm offended at your offense. So this is going to be multiple wavelengths here, I'm sure. And what you're looking at there is the Cat's Eye Nebula, a very famous nebula, and that is in optical and in X-ray bands. So that's from the Chandra and the Hubble. And what you're seeing there is multiple different shells of output as there's a highly variable star somewhere in the middle of that. And you're seeing it going through some major undulations. You can see these jets also are very interesting features. Those may give us access, uh, those may give us uh, insight rather into the axis of that star in the center. Keep in mind, folks, all rotational objects do have a precessional wobble, like when a top is spinning. Nothing is perfectly symmetrical. Everything has a precessional wobble. Check it out. The random number today is 54, which coincides with RGBJ0136 plus 391, a BL Lasserte object, which is a type of active galactic nucleus. It's a galaxy, in other words. There are the hard x-rays over the past 16 years, the past day, and the past 30 days from that active galactic nucleus. By the way, from these, from these items, most of them, if you click on Simbad, you'll get some kind of visual. And if you click on the CDS portal, you will get a wealth of information. Yeah, the CDS portal, it's a good time. We show it regularly on the Cosmology segments. So here's this galaxy. This is going to be optical bands, I would imagine. That's the DSS colored. You're allowed to say that when you're talking about the bandwidth of instruments. Colored, no longer an offensive term. When it comes to astronomy, yes. You're allowed to say it, folks. It's, you're allowed to describe the spectral bandwidth occupation of certain electromagnetic radiation on the spectrum known as all right I gotta stop next here's the galax there's the UV spectral emissions it's pretty bright in ultraviolet and Bia Lasserte objects are they look like fairly full spectrum in this case And different galaxies send us different kinds of emissions. Some of them are only bright in X-ray. Some of them are bright in infrared, etc. That's one of the ways that we classify galaxies. That's today's cosmology segment. Let's move on. It was integrated to the Daily Space Weather video, not a separate video. We've got over 200 of those in our playlist. Our Spaced Out Cosmology playlist at youtube.com slash smash a mash slash playlists. The main content source of the Smash News Network, least busted. Name it news. Next, we've got some charging hazards here over the Western Indian Ocean, the Northwestern Indian Ocean. A little bit of charging hazards there. As there is an electron storm going on, so you've got surface charging as a result of that. You can see here's the last year of electron flux. You can see we're at quite high levels here at the moment. That's from Solon.info. Here's the three-day chart. And we're expecting even a little bit higher levels here coming in the next 24 hours. I think we set out an alert about this yesterday to the Smash team. And I would tend to agree with the NOAA forecast here. You can expect to see quite high levels of electron flux. It may cause some communication outages, some slow internet loading times and things like this. 
depending on your location and a lot of other factors. Some of those factors, we're going to cover it right now. The total electron content forecast is next. This shows you the most likely spots for GPS errors here on planet Earth. Most of them occur around the equator at noon, but sometimes we see chaos, and we've been seeing some additional errors over places like North America. I'll let it play through a second time as this is quite relevant data to a lot of people. We also see some unexpected errors there over the southern Indian Ocean, the northern Indian Ocean. And let's show you even more stuff about the ionosphere. Here's the ionogram, showing you a vibrational frequency at about 300 kilometers of altitude. This is about 100 kilometers lower altitude than the International Space Station. Anyway, you're going to see additional anomalies here once again. So there's the latest image. And we're seeing high frequency anomalies there in the southern Atlantic. Here's the anomaly gram showing you anomaly from the 30 day median in megahertz. High frequency in blue, low frequency in red. And most of Earth's anomalies in the ionosphere are centered around the South Atlantic anomaly, which is actually now over the South American continent. And that affects the way particles flow and so on. It's pretty serious stuff. Anyway, here's the latest image. That is 1045 Universal Time, and you can see Low frequency anomalies there in South Africa. I agree. Anyway, how about some bonus features? You could consider our meteorology segments a bonus feature without using too much imagination. They're pretty sweet. They usually premiere before the Daily Space Weather videos. Here comes the rest of the bonus features for today. It's the El Taide Ground Based Solar Observatory. Our coronal mass ejection warning has not expired. We haven't seen the activity we're expecting yet, but it's going to happen. There's going to be one on the far side of the sun as well, if you weren't aware of that. We don't usually forecast those, but sometimes we throw it in as a little extra tidbit. Here's the latest intensity gram and colorized magnetogram. So like I said, this sunspot's been breaking down. You can see these penumbral bridges now going across the dark portion, the umbral portion of the spot. A little bit of a spot forming up here too. So maybe some additional activity happening there. Sometimes sunspots go away and reform. This one has gotten actually more complex since we uh, did show prep here. These umbrae have grown. So the likelihood of a major flare from that is going up. Again, that area up there now has grown an umbra as well. So there's another uptick. Again, there is a coronal hole wind stream on the way as well. We're expecting it to be very beefy as the radio flux has dropped all the way down into the 80s. And that is, that is, a, that is a plasma effect, I would say, with a very high degree of certainty that that is sort of what you'd call a bad reading because of the coronal hole wind stream and its density and speed. Anyway... Here's the Go 16 SUVI imagery in 304 angstroms. This is what we usually stream when we stream live to Twitch for solar imagery. Here's my favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. It's just spectacular. And we'll close that with some close-ups. That is AR2894. The most likely spot to have a major flare in the coming 24 hours. And here's 2893 looking spectacular as it sets toward the northwestern limb there, also a filament to its north. And also some, you can actually see the coronal mass ejection down in this area. Great imagery there from the SDO, once again, in my favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. 
Once again, viewers, thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. And may that solar wind be at your back. Opinions expressed in this video are not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network, Least Busted, Name and News.